Good morning. Investments into clean energy have been going down in the year 2016 by 18% versus the uh, yeah, record investments that we had in the year 2015. Record investments were 287.5 billion US dollars. Europe had a plus of 3%, but there was a lot of pressure from populist movements, the environment, uh, environmentalists had some pressure from those populist movements. Um, there was some 19% of po power output increase though, uh, even though investments have gone down, there has been more bang for the buck because prices have been going down for solar cells and so on. Um, right now we are, with regards to investments into um, renewable energy, into clean technologies, uh, we are 40% below those targets that have been set in Paris. China is the big driver, they have a stagnant energy demand and they get, uh, the companies there get less subsidies from the government. Japan is also 43% down. Japan is a traditional country which imports LNG, liquefied natural gas, and they profit from the twindling energy prices that we had in year 2016. So they invested less into clean energy. The big exception was offshore wind. It was up by 40% to 29.9 billion US dollars. So that is one sector that is actually growing, especially in the North Sea with the big British uh, um, uh, wind, wind energy projects there. Yesterday we, we had the ECB minutes being published of the last meeting and they were not really speaking with one voice there. There were a lot of different uh, opinions about how to proceed with the QE program. There were um, two suggestions actually, which was also the expectations of the markets. It was a um, in, uh, time increase in the duration, duration increase by six months and do 80 billion euros or nine months and do 60 billion dollars. There was even a suggestion to have only six months and 60 billion dollars of um, government bond buying. And uh, now we know, of course, that it has been uh, decided uh, somehow the common ground has been found to do nine months and 60 billion. Um, but it was not anonymous anonymous. Um, there were a lot of um, uh, um, directors in the ECB actually saying that oh, it's not really necessary, inflation expectations are going up already and so we do not really need those programs to be running until the end of this year. So prepare for hawkish comments out of the ECB, prepare for spikes in the euro dollar which has denied to go to parity and um, with every higher inflation data point, it might be that there will be more and more hawkish statements out of the ECB, which tends to follow the Federal Reserve with a time delay of one to one and a half years. So they are not going to be uh, in the position mid-year this year to uh, talk about any further increase in quantitative easing. That's not the way it goes, or at least if inflation data is going to go up, from now on, it is quite sure that they will taper the QA program and go into a normalization of monetary policy mode. Of course, that all depends on the elections and political headwinds that we will have. Um, it's not to be expected that next week when the ECB will meet next that there will be any changes uh, because just because of those uh, inflation data that came out of Germany and the Eurozone for the month of December, which were higher than expected. but. It's not that just one data point changes what the ECB is actually doing. Apple is going to Hollywood. It will do its own TV shows and in an early stage even its own movies to compensate for the flagging smartphone sales. Smartphones are thought to be actually a mature market. Uh, everybody knows what a smartphone is, how it works, there will be no major innovations coming from that, so don't expect that from the new iPhone, that there will be a big left forward. George Soros, the big investor, lost a billion US dollars since Trump. It was very bearish, but the guy was diversified um, and had a plus of 5% for the year 2016, even though he lost a lot of money with Trump in the rally afterwards. The guy, George Soros, 
sold half of its losing position in November. Uh, even though he lost a billion dollars, he did not um, hold to those losses. So that is actually our experience that those that really lose big, they hold on to losing positions. They even try to, um, to, to increase the position size to, to make a new entry point of the entry point closer to the market which is going in the wrong direction. No, he cut the position and he was out and he was diversified. So plus 5% for Soros here. Um, at Truckenmiller, his ex-colleague, um, he was all right with his position, sold all gold on the election night. So he decided within the press, he bought equities in a big, big way and said he is said to have made a fortune with that Trump rally.